The Master Keys MK750 is Cooler Master's most premium mechanical gaming keyboard with perky RGB lighting, the distinct illuminated light bar across the front, and a premium braided cable with an actual USB Type-C plug. There's a removable soft magnetic wrist rest, and it's available with a variety of genuine Cherry MX switches, so click the sponsor link in the description for more information. Excellent! Well, hi everyone, and welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today's video, if it wasn't already obvious, is gonna be about this case from Deepcool. It's probably one of the biggest cases that I've dealt with here in my garage. It's the Quad Stellar. It's very large, and I'm basically gonna take it out of the box and assemble a system in it and let you guys know how it goes. Let's get started. So let's start off with a kind of once over, just getting it out of the box so you guys can see packaging and everything. Uh, and of course the, the layout of the Quad Stellar. I've actually covered the Quad Stellar a little bit in show coverage at Computex last year and at CES at the beginning of this year. And some people have asked, hey, when's this actually gonna launch? Because it's a pretty unique design. Getting it out of the box, it's actually, it's still pretty large because it's got a pretty wide stance, but it's not quite as huge as I feel like I, it, I, I, I felt like it was. That probably doesn't make that much sense, but uh, basically you have uh, metal frames uh, that actually go around. These are aluminum around each of the four quadrants. And then you have tempered glass pieces that are affixed to each of those. These don't remove, they're actually fixed in place. But I do want to point out that there's a small gap uh, in between those. So it is slightly open air and I'm, I'm losing focus here because I'm trying to use autofocus, but just, just uh, something I, I noticed that I don't think I had noticed when I first looked at this at the show. So uh, these are all not how they should look. These are actually all covered with some plasticky bits that I can peel off slowly for you guys. Um, but the four chambers allow you to support uh, the motherboard, which is, it fits at an angle kind of down here. Uh, you also have the power supply chamber in the lower left. Up here in the top right quadrant is where your graphics cards will go, and it comes with some ribbon cables to connect those up to the motherboard. And then this chamber in the top left is all for storage. And this will all make a lot more sense once I actually start to open up the different pieces. Peeling off more plastic, though. Oh, so much fun. There's one here, too. Oh, that one felt different than the others. It's weird. As for packaging on the tempered glass, uh, they're basically held in with some tape it seems so i've uh, put some actual pieces of foam under here too which probably is just helping keep the, those rattle around during shipping well, that piece is really kind of stuck in there we go okay so that lets us uh pull the plastic off of these top tempered glass pieces and uh, give me a sec to get all these off i can actually show you what the case looks like without packaging these really are wedged in there. Okay. Okay, I've removed most of the plastic and everything, except there's plastic on the inside of these lower tempered glass pieces as well. So I'm gonna need to get that in a second. But now you can at least see uh, how reflective this case is. Because you have reflective pieces on the front, uh, these are plastic pieces up here, and then of course the tempered glass on the top and the sides as well. While I'm up here, I can point out the uh, actual front panel I.O. You got a couple USB 3.0 ports, as well as a mic and a headphone jack. Uh, as I've been stating since the end of 2017, we're really looking for USB-C ports on these cases, especially the high-end ones, so that would have been nice to see here, but you at least get the basics taken care of right there. Okay, if I'm remembering correctly, this is actually the power button right here as well, although uh, we'll need to test that once we actually get everything set up. I believe there's a manual inside there too, but uh, we'll, I'll get these Piece, these panels off in just a second. Real quick though, just to show you guys another look directly from the back, and here's where you can see uh, where the motherboard sits, sort of at a 45 degree angle right there with the uh, IO shield would be here, the expansion slots would be here. And then you can also see how some of the cooling works on this since most of these individual chambers can be uh, cooled by 120 millimeter intake and exhaust fans, so uh, that's pretty nice as well. And then here you can also get a better look at where your graphics cards go, IO would be right up there. And then uh, again, over here would be storage. And then the bottom right is where your power supply goes. Mm -hmm. 
located the product manual. Just have never seen a product manual delivered in this format. Aha. Uh -huh. oh, that's glorious. All right, guys, I managed to uh, remove all of the aluminum panels on the four quadrants of the quad stellar and was also able to remove the manual scroll, which is tucked in there and held with a few uh, Velcro straps and everything. So this gives us a better idea of being able to look inside and see what the heck's going on in there, as well as where everything's supposed to go, as well as um, my bit of confusion as to whether or not, not there's actually a mechanical element to these pieces up front. These little flaps up front are supposed to uh, be able to, to open up a little bit. And I was messing with this one and I, I loosened it. I think we need to actually get the power connected up there so that we can actually mess with that a little bit more. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Here's a look at the lower chamber though, where your power supply would go right there. And as you can tell, basically any length power supply will fit in there. This also gives us a look at the back of the motherboard tray down here. So first off, you'll probably notice there's tons and tons of tie down points all along here. There's also this contraption, which is a central control board unit, uh, which controls a bunch of the fans that can all be connected up through there. There's also a, a digital LED input that you can do there to control the digital RGB LEDs that are, that are on the case. And you also have a PWM fan functions. So they've also conveniently included a little chart here uh, so you can point out which of those connectors are which. Uh, the case actually comes with uh, five 120 millimeter fans that are pre-installed. So four of those fans are uh, on the four of the intakes uh, where the little flaps in the front go. And then uh, the only chamber that has an exhaust fan here is the storage chamber right here. Uh, so your hard drives can stay nice and cool. And that's definitely probably going to be a feature that people use for this case because uh, given the size, I imagine, practically speaking, you're probably going to want uh, a system that you put a lot of hardware into, including lots of drives. Over on this side, we can see the other side of the motherboard tray, and they have, uh, you know, high-end features you would assume would come with a case that's a little bit more on the expensive side, such as some rubber uh, pass-through for your grommets. Uh, you can see, like, your USB 3 uh, extension and that kind of thing. Or they're all black. Just a little bit of color on the HD audio cable there, but not a huge deal. And um, you do have the option to either use this ribbon cable here to take your graphics card and put it up in the top section. They've included one ribbon extension cable here. So if you're gonna go for SLI, you would need to get a second one of those, but you can do two uh, graphics cards in SLI or, or Crossfire up there. And then you just have this whole wide open chamber here. So if you're gonna do water cooling, probably some decent amount of space right there since you will be able to get a view of this from uh, in the top through the tempered glass panel. Uh, and then of course you got that dedicated fan cooling this entire chamber. So especially if you're just putting a single graphics card in there, you should have plenty of airflow. Another thing I've noticed about this case as I'm looking it over and also as indicated in the manual is the entire thing can pretty much be broken down into its constituent pieces. Uh, everything is held on by Phillips head screws. Like you can see up here for these top cross beams uh, that just help uh, support the case. Uh, you could take the entire thing apart. I haven't found any rivets on the entire system and that is definitely a good thing. Looking over at the storage area, here's a single spot for your 2.5 inch hard drive. So if you have a nice SSD, that would be visible through the top uh, glass panel. And then of course you got these uh, removable trays here, support 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drives. And uh, that will give you lots and lots of storage. Another thing about the storage tray is uh, you have four uh, Phillips head screws, one, two, three, and four right here. And then there's a, a few thumb screws that hold it on down at the bottom. So plenty of support, but you can remove that and pull this entire tray out so you can set up all your drives in it how you want to, get things wired up, especially if you're doing a nine drive configuration. Uh, that's a very convenient feature to have. And uh, speaking of removing everything, again, um, all these little brackets that hold everything together can be removed with Phillips head screws down at the end. Each little tray can be removed. And that means that yes, uh, even the motherboard tray there, if you completely disassemble the whole thing, the motherboard tray is free floating kind of by itself. So you could pull that out uh, to get your stuff installed on it if you want to. All right, guys, I'm getting my hardware together, but I've realized there's a couple more things I wanted to point out about this case really quickly. Uh, one is uh, continuing along the water cooling support theme, which is where do you install radiators in this thing? The most practical place to install like a CPU radiator, and CPU would be right in this area, is gonna be along these two brackets right here. This will support a 240 millimeter rad uh, installed in it. It is a little bit longer actually, and um, the same brackets exist right up here. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if some modders maybe are able to wedge something lengthier than 240. But basically you have support for a 240 here, a 240 here up on this bracket, and then you could also do another radiator down here in the power supply area if you were so inclined. Again, that's probably moving more towards custom water cooling configurations, but good to know you got plenty of support for your rads and the fans, wherever you might put them. I also wanted to real quickly show you guys the accessories that come in the box, um, other than the screws I've been removing. I do want to point out they're not all captive thumb screws. The ones in the back do pop off, but, whoops, but some of the internal ones are captive thumb, thumb screws, so I don't think that was neglectful. It's just something they decided not to do for the main chambers. Anyway, I've uh, got a couple extensions here for your PWM fans, uh, so depending on where in the case you want to route those, you've got those available, so you can connect those up to that included smart hub. And then you've got this baggie with a bunch of extra stuff here, including some zip ties and then individually labeled uh, fan screws, hard drive screws, uh, fan extender screws for going through radiators or going through fans into radiators, uh, power supply screws, all the uh, accessories that you'd want, as well as a couple Velcro straps there as well. Okay, let's move on to the build I'm about to put together. This was kind of hastily chosen from the parts that I have lying around here in the garage. For storage, it's going to throw in a single SSD. So we're doing kind of the bare minimum of hardware in here, but this is a Samsung 850 Pro 512 gig. Over here, we've got our power supply, slightly used EVGA 750 watt G3 with the uh, sleeved extension kit from EVGA. We've got a 16, I'm sorry, 32 gig kit of Trident Z memory for our quad channel memory configuration for our processor. The Asus Strix Radeon Vega 64, um, just very nice card. It's too bad they're all overpriced everywhere, but um, what can you do right now? And then finally, for some cooling for the CPU, we've got the NZXT Kraken's X62. So I think all that's gonna make a damn fine build, so why don't I go ahead and put it all together? Well guys, I've decided I need to pull an audible here and change up some of the hardware that I have uh, chosen for this build. Main reason is due to compatibility with a cooling solution here. Now, of course, I originally chose to do a Threadripper build with the 1950X right here in the Asus Zenith Extreme, which I thought was a good option because it's a higher end configuration. This is a higher end case costing about $400, $399 MSRP, and it's EATX, which means it's gonna, you know, this is a case that supports bigger motherboard, so that was a good solution. Now what I realized is uh, the 1950X doesn't ship with a cooler. It ships with this little bracket um, that you can use with an Ace Tech based cooler, so you can get an, a liquid cooler on there. Now unfortunately the NZXT Kraken X62 that I was originally gonna use actually has a 280 millimeter radiator, 240 millimeter fans. And this case actually only supports 120 millimeter fans everywhere, the intakes, uh, the brackets for radiators uh, that are in, positioned in different areas. Um, so that meant I needed a uh, all-in-one liquid cooler that had a 240 millimeter radiator that was compatible with this Ace Tech mount. And I basically don't have that anywhere here. So what I've done is rather than changing up my liquid cooling solution, well, I am doing that too, but uh, I needed to change up the liquid cooling solution to be compatible with these brackets. And I'm also changing up the actual foundation of the entire build uh, by switching over to the Rampage 6 Extreme, going with an Intel build X299 chipset, and I have swapped in the 7980XE, the Extreme Edition 18-core Intel processor in there. So it's still going to be a ridiculous high-end build, super fancy, high-end uh, Asus EATX motherboard and everything. Still going to use quad-channel memory, I guess, uh, sw swap these DIMMs over. But the difference is the socket here, the actual mounting solution for my cooler, which I'm now going to be using a deep cool cooler as well since I've switched over. The Captain 240EX, which does has, have support for LG, LGA 2011 uh, sockets. So let's finish. I'm, I'm ready to have this thing put together.
Okay guys, I'm about ready to put the uh, external shroud uh, cast aluminum pieces back over the four quadrants here, but I wanted to show you guys at least a, a quick look internally at how I've got everything set up before we move on there. I wanna point out at least for this main chamber down here where the uh, motherboard tray goes and everything, there is both the 240 uh, mount down here for a couple uh, 120 millimeter fans or a 240 millimeter radiator. You can also do a 360 uh, at an angle going up that way. Um, so three by 120. It's again narrower, so it only fits 120 millimeter fans. But if you've got a bigger radiator or if you're going for a more expansive water cooling project or just to know what uh, it's capable of supporting, 360 rad mount goes right up there as well. And that uh, bracket that holds it can actually be removed along with pretty much all the panels in this case. All these supporting beams and everything are all held on by uh, Phillips head screws. So you can really disassemble this entire thing if you wanted to, for example, get at the motherboard tray individually or uh, any of the brackets for mounting the radiators and that kind of thing. I, for example, mounted this radiator with the bracket still on there, but you could remove these pieces mount the radiator to it and then screw it back in over here if you wanted to as well. Just your option for however you want to put the system together. I've got the Deep Cool Captain 240EX down here at the bottom. It's the white version, which doesn't blend in quite as well, but that's how it's installed and that's how I've got it configured. I do want to point out that there's a little bit of a lack of space here. Um, I mean, it's just pretty tight in there. Um, I've got a single, just a push configuration going on with this radiator. So if you want to push pull, you probably wouldn't be able to fit it there. Uh, you'd conflict with the motherboard up here, but that's not too much of a critique, just sort of a planning thing to keep in mind because obviously there's a lot more places in the case where you could fit uh, radiators. But if you're using an all-in-one, you're pretty much probably gonna be only gonna be able to fit it here or in the front space right over there. Beyond that though, our Vega 64 Strix Edition is installed up here in the upper chamber and I've got everything wired for power. Uh, as far as LEDs, I've pretty much gone with the default configuration for this case. This case doesn't ship with a separate LED strip, um, but I did at least wire up the um, RGB LEDs to connect to the motherboard on the Deep Cool Captain, and then I'll see if I can uh, connect the controller board up to that too. Here's a look at the cable management area, and um, it's pretty simple to cable manage just because there's lots of space down here, and they have included tons and tons of tie down points, which I definitely appreciate. Uh, and here's the controller board as well. All of the pre installed five 120 millimeter fans are all pre wired up to this board, too, so that's nice. And you can connect to this board and control it with an app. So I'm gonna get that app installed and also give you guys some footage of this completed build. And while I'm getting ready to put these side panels back on, there is protective plastic on the inside of several of the tempered glass pieces as well. So I'm gonna peel that off. Here goes. Oh my God. It's alive. Well guys, at this point it is time for me to wrap up this video because honestly I've spent way, way more time on this case and this build than I originally intended to. And all that said, I don't even have like a full featured final review for you guys, so I apologize, but I'm gonna quickly go down the pros and the cons that I have uh, come across and determined for you uh, today. So pros, it's got a unique eye-catching look and design, for sure, it's a very different case. It's a very different size case, a different shape case. You don't immediately know it's a computer case looking at it. And it definitely can fit a ton of hardware in there. EATX port for the motherboard. Uh, you can support up to three graphics cards in the top uh, cage here. And if for whatever reason you wanted to do a four-way solution, you could fit that in the lower area, but I don't think that's really practical for how it's designed. Also tons of uh, space for hard drives and SSDs up there in the drive area. Finally, you can definitely tell that this is a flagship case from Deep Cool because the build quality is very top-notch. Not only do they have these very hefty and pretty sturdy uh, cast aluminum pieces for all the four quadrants, but the entire thing is held together by screws. Phillips head screw with screw, screws for the most part. So it's really cool that you can get in there and disassemble the whole thing if you so desire. Now that's not to say it's a perfect case by any stretch. So let's go over the cons. Uh, there's no five and a quarter inch base. 
probably not a big deal for most people, but it is a larger case. Sometimes people look for those for reservoirs and that kind of thing. Uh, it does have some cool built-in LEDs on the front here and the Gamer Storm logo up on the top, but they don't include an additional LED strip along with it. Uh, that is something that they include with like the, the cooler, for example. So, so I thought an extra LED strip might have been a nice add-on. Um, the CPU cooler height limitation is kind of surprising. It's 110 millimeter total heights. Um, so it's not the best solution for air cooling. Chances are if you're building it in a case like this, you're gonna go for water cooling. But it is important to know that uh, higher end air coolers won't fit in there. It's also worth pointing out that you have only 120 millimeter fan support wherever you can put fans in this case. They're all 120s, which isn't a huge deal, but you don't have the massive radiator support in various different configurations for 120 and 140 millimeter fans like you do with some other high-end, more expensive cases like the Quad Stellar. This case is $400, and in my opinion, once you get beyond the $150 to $200 price point, you are getting into the realm of I'm paying more money for special unique features that maybe aren't so practical. So from that perspective, the Quad Stellar does make sense. It stands out, it's well-built, and it's got support for the hardware you need. That said, practically speaking, I was actually pretty frustrated with this case over the past day or two, just trying to get things finalized in here. For one thing, the ability to just open up your case, get in there to do something real quick, if you like to tinker a lot, is very challenging with this case. You've got to remove these panels, which can only slide off from the back. So if the case is positioned somewhere, you'd have to probably pull it out from where it at, wherever it is to get at that. I was having issues connecting the, uh, the Deepcool app, which you can use to connect to the controller board that's in there in order to control this lighting and do various effects. I had zero luck doing that. Since I wasn't able to connect with my smartphone, I had to pull the side panel off in order to get at the PCB, and there is a button on there that you can supposedly hold in for six seconds in order to reset it. I did that, didn't work. Still wasn't able to connect. So after I wasn't able to get the app to work, I hardwired up the direct connection for the digital LED control from the motherboard to the controller PCB, and I'm not sure that's working either. But like I said, guys, I am completely out of time for this video, so I have to leave it here. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about the Deep Cool Quad Stellar case in my build and assessment of my building experience video here. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy it. Also, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know if this case piques your interest at all. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more tech videos coming at you really soon. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.